Okay. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay. As I've been preparing the repertoire for my YouTube project, I've had to reflect a little bit on my process of how exactly I do prepare that repertoire. My students and people ask me all the time, how do I start to prepare a piece? Where do I even start? There's so much that goes into a piece of music, not only the technical, but the musical and the emotional. And so for me, I have a simple three-part process, body, mind, spirit. I think of those three aspects, and what I mean by body is the technical, what my body actually has to do to produce the sounds that I want to produce. So posture, breathing, uh, airflow, articulation, slide technique, basic sound, flexibility, range, all of those things to me go in the category of body. When I talk about mind, I mean the more intellectual aspects of music making. So harmony, texture, uh, rhythm, uh, structure, all of that. What I mean by spirit is truly the point of music, which is what's the emotion? How, what am I trying to communicate? What do I feel when I play this music? What do I hope that other people feel when I play this music? What do I hope the audience envisions? What story do I hope they're, they're seeing in their heads as I play this music? And I think that's the crucial aspect that then from which everything else comes. So in my case, I actually start with spirit. I go spirit, mind, body. I start with what's the emotional point of this piece. So I'll, I'll play through the piece a few times and I'll get an idea of what's the primary emotion. I'll start to do my research. And once I find out what's the primary emotion, then that tells me what does, what does how do I now guide my research? Uh, as I dig into the piece and look at the harmony and the rhythm and the texture and all of those intellectual aspects, they're now guided by that primary emotion. And then once I analyze all those aspects, that now tells me what I have to go work on. So if I have a, if I have a, a piece that needs to be rhythmic and driving and intense, because the emotion is very intense, now I know that the rhythm has to be very good, and if my rhythm isn't good, now I need to go work on it in the body. So a great example of this is the first time that I went through this process was in college and I was preparing the Uwazen Sonata for a competition. And uh, that was the first time that I started to prepare the piece from the spirit first. So what is this piece about? What do I hope that people envision? And what do I hope that people feel? What do I feel? Where are the places that I have to go in my heart in order to really pull off the emotion of this piece? Then from that, I started to do research into the piece, analyzing the rhythms, the harmonies, every aspect of it musically, and then that told me what I had to go work on. For example, in the Uwazen, that first movement is about a drive and intensity and an energy, and so I had to make sure that my time was very good, and my time wasn't very good at the time, so I had to go and work on my time feel and the syncopated rhythms and all that that you find in the Uwazen. So what this allowed me to do was not only did I think about the how, but I thought about the what and I thought about the why. So from the granular to, uh, and, the, and the very small aspects all the way to the, to the 30,000 foot overview, I was able to keep my mind on the music making. When I'm working on my long tones, when I'm working on my lip slurs, when I'm working on my articulation exercises, I have a context in which I put that and then I don't stop there, I make sure that that context has an emotional reason so that I can keep my music about communication and I can keep it, the whole process from beginning to finish, about the music. And in the end, I got a more reliable product and a more enjoyable process and a more enjoyable product for me and for my audience.